You know, and with others, it's the voice. So whatever it is, you know, as black women, as long as we are climbing, as long as we're moving, as long as we're getting things done, I don't mind being associated. So I certainly don't mind being associated with your president and CEO, Dr. Marjorie Hill. She is phenomenal, and uh, she speaks uh, in the same voice whether we're in Washington, D.C., whether we're in Albany, and now as she chairs our New York State AIDS Advisory Council, I am just so delighted because I know we're going to get so much more done. So thank you, Marjorie. I want to say I'm delighted to uh, be here with you this afternoon. This truly is an important event. And although it's talked about as a part of World AIDS Day, which we commemorated on last Saturday, December 1st, as uh, Marjorie said, we need to be doing things to highlight what is happening among African Americans and especially African American women right. with respect to HIV. Earlier today, I was at my church, Abyssinia Baptist Church, and to my surprise, actually, uh, Reverend Calvin, uh, Dr. Calvin O. Butts, who is the chair of my board, spent a great deal of time talking about the new technology, OraQuic, the over-the-counter uh, tests that can be done in one's home. And he really did a, a, a phenomenal sort of um, talk, dialogue almost, about HIV, AIDS, impact among African Americans and really what we all must do about it. And we had the president there from Orishore Technology, Dr. not Dr. but Doug Michaels, and he spoke. And the, the, the congregation was very responsive to everything that they heard. Now I was encouraged by that because as you know at the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS, we work predominantly with faith-based leaders in our affiliate cities around the country where we are in Tampa, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., Detroit, Michigan, New York City, Long Island, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and um, Albany. We work a lot with the clergy, so every time I hear messages coming from the pulpit about this, it's even more encouraging because we know who they reach and they reach far more people than any of us in this room could ever do. So I see one of my staff here, Mr. Leatrice Walker, who is also uh, working with the clergy, and I want you to know he did an excellent job today, Leatrice, so I'm proud of that. So, we're not taking it lying down, and nor should we. That's right. <clears throat> we should not take it lying down because women, African-American women, Latino women, combined have over, represent over 90% of all the new infections of HIV among all women. Black and Latino women tend to enter later in HIV care, tend to have a lower likelihood of receiving antiretroviral therapy, have twice as many HIV related illnesses yep. and are disproportionately lower income and more likely to have caretaking responsibilities for other people in the family and thereby neglecting one's own health. Making sure the children are taken care of, the parents, the partner, the husband, the friend, uh, everybody except herself. All of this, we know, has played into what we are now seeing. We also know that this phenomenon is fueled by multiple types of discrimination 
that are experienced by a majority of women of color and poor women, including transgender women in the United States, as well as the discrimination and neglect experienced by much of a larger HIV community in the form of underfunded healthcare systems. So another reason why we should not take it lying down because last year Congress passed a very important piece of legislation, the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. And with the re-election of President Barack Obama, we now know that it will go forward. Yeah. And that Affordable Care Act, and I understand you're going to be going into a great more detail about that later, it provides a great deal of support in meeting the needs of women. I mean, that's right. Women who are living with HIV as well as other health care needs that women have. So we need to know. We need to know what is in that. We need to know about the free preventative uh, treatments or, or uh, testing that are necessary and being made available like gynecological checkups, yeah. like HIV testing, yeah. like mammograms, testing yeah. for diabetes, yeah. and other things that are going to be free. So in addition to making sure that we're not taking it lying down as we move forward on a discussion of health and wellness for women of color, Let's keep in mind that we need to know what is in that Affordable Care Act. So as you go back to your respective programs, as you continue your work with GMAC, and as you interact with your family and your friends, continue to raise the roof with respect to what is happening with women of color right. around HIV and what promises exist with the Affordable Care Act. So today...